This is one of the textbook problems that provides you with two continuous random variables, x1 and x2, which have the survival times of two white rats that were subjected to different levels of radiation. And they've also provided that x1 and x2 are independent. What this means is that once you do find the PDF of x1 and x2, to find the joint PDF, all you have to do is just multiply them together. A couple of things that you might first want to know is the PDF of a Pareto distribution, which is as follows and is designated by that. And in this case, your theta is greater than zero and kappa is greater than zero. And kappa in this case is actually the shape parameter for the specific model. Now that you're familiar with the PDF, all you're going to do is substitute each of those values from the question to find your PDF. So for the sake of convenience, I'm going to let x equals x1 and y equals x2, just to avoid some sort of confusion. But that's how your joint PDF must look like. And your designated values, theta and kappa, is just to be substituted back into the PDF. And that's how your joint PDF would look like once you plug in all the values for f of x and y. Once you're done simplifying f of x and y, your final joint probability density function should look something like this. 1 over 1 plus x whole squared times 2 over 2 plus y whole cubed. Now that you've figured out your joint probability density function, we can move on to find the probability that the second rat outlives the first rat, which is basically you're looking at all the value, all the y values greater than x. That means it's outliving the first rat. So one of the easiest ways to look at it is that draw a graph for y equals x. And when it says probability that x is less than y, you're basically taking in all the values of x that are less than y and shading in that region, which is basically that region. So now what you want to know is because this is a joint density function, this isn't a two-dimensional figure anymore. This is actually a three-dimensional figure. Because this is a three-dimensional figure, you're going to have a double integral. Because ultimately, you're not finding the area of this region anymore. You're actually finding the volume. So once you have your whole graph figured out, you, the trick part here is to find the bounds of integral. So if you're going to be integrating in terms of dx dy, you should look at what your outermost bound is supposed to be. Your outermost bound, you're integrating from 0 to infinity because there's no specific bound on top of the shape. Your bound is just infinity. So you'd just be integrating from 0 to infinity with respect to y. And then to find the inner bound, you'd just be integrating from 0 to the function because it's in terms of dx, x equals y. So my inner integral is supposed to be from 0 to just y. So that's how your dx dy function should look like. You integrate from 0 to infinity, 0 to y, f of xy for dx dy. Now in case you were integrating for dy dx, you'd be integrating from 0 to infinity in terms with respect to x, and then you'd be integrating from the function to infinity with respect to y. So the function here in this case is x to infinity. So that's how your function would look similar, something like that. From 0 to infinity, x to infinity, f of xy dy dx. Now that you have your joint distribution function figured out, you can just substitute back into the integral and start solving. So this is what you need to be integrating to find that the second rat outlives the first rat. Because we are integrating first with respect to dx, 2 over 1 plus y cubed could be treated as a constant. So I can just pull the 2 over 1 plus y cubed outside the integral of dx and just compute that first. Now there's multiple ways to solve this integral. You could use u as 1 plus x and du equals dx. So when you take the derivative, that's what you end up with. When you integrate u to the negative 2, you're just going to end up with 1 over u plus a constant. Well, in this case, you have bounds or limits you don't have to worry about the constant. Now that you substitute 1 plus x back into u, you'll end up with that. And to compute negative 1 over 1 plus x from 0 to y, you're basically going to end up with y over y plus 1. So once you substitute y over y plus 1 back into the equation, you'll end up with 2y over 1 plus y to the fourth dy. A couple of ways to evaluate this integral is that you could pull the 2 out first and then again you can use a u substitution so your u equals 1 plus y and u minus 1 equals y plug that value back into the equation you'll end up with u minus 1 over u to the fourth now you can split the fractions 
Once you split the fractions, you'll end up with 1 over u cubed minus 1 over u to the fourth. Now it's easier for you to put the value 1 plus y back into the u. Once you do that, this will be your new equation. Computing this is much easier now. So compute that. You can just split the integrals into two parts and solve them individually. So basically, you just evaluate this integral the way you've been evaluating before, and you'll end up with that. When you, once you're done substituting the values back into the equation, you'll end up with 2 times 0 plus a half minus 2 times 0 plus a third. And that will give you a probability of a third, or a probability of 0.333, that the second rat outlives the first rat. I've also uploaded a PDF version in case you're too lazy to watch the video of a basic outline of how this problem is solved. So if you want to, if you're too lazy to watch the video, you can just look at the PDF version that I uploaded in the description below. If you have any questions or concerns, just comment or message me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible if I have time.